This is a 6 years old Galaxy S10, but right now it's running Samsung's latest One UI 7 with Android 15. It has all the features the Galaxy S25 Ultra has and I'm about to show you how that's even possible, how you can get it and whether it's worth doing at all. The moment I installed this port straight from the Galaxy S25 Ultra, I couldn't believe how different everything started to feel. The smoothness, the animations, the modern UI, the new features, the whole experience of the phone changed. It honestly felt like I was using a completely different and modern device. It's got the Galaxy AI features, yeah, the same ones Samsung said would only work on their modern phones. The extra features and editing and those small visual touches everywhere, all of that is in here. The mix of the new One UI 7 redesign and those AI tools feels premium, like futuristic. And the best part is, I have been using it for a few days now and so far, no major problems. No glitches, no boot loops, nothing scary. Everything's been working surprisingly well. The only things that might not work are the ones this hardware just doesn't support. Like for example, it shows that you can switch between standard and smooth refresh rates in the display settings, but that does nothing because the display is physically locked at 60Hz. That's expected. But even then, the animations feels noticeably smoother, and so does the vibration feedback. It's weirdly satisfying. The Exynos 9820 on this model I'm using is holding up really well. Even though this isn't something officially made by Samsung, the developer behind this, Extreme XT, and the contributors who helped bring it to life deserve a huge shout out. Without people like them, something this cool wouldn't be possible. And this whole thing just proves that from a hardware's perspective, this phone is still capable of running Samsung's newest software. Imagine how much better it would run if Samsung actually released an optimized version for it, even with just the basic features. They always talk about sustainability and reducing e-waste, but then leave phones like these behind. Even though many of us still love these older Galaxy phones, the S10 was one of the most loved devices, and it still holds up. Now since I have installed it, I have run various apps and tried some heavy tasks to check if performance drops or if it heats up, gaming for example, smooth, HDR settings, smooth frame rates, and even after long sessions, there wasn't any major heating or battery drain. Performance stayed consistent. The Galaxy AI features like Note Assist where you can summarize, translate or reformat your notes works beautifully. Same with Photo Assist and the editor. You can remove or replace stuff with AI and it actually looks good. There's Audio Eraser too which removes unwanted sounds in your videos and yes, it works. The voice recorder has transcription now and that works great as well. There's also the Now Brief feature you have probably seen on the Galaxy S25 Ultra and that also works just fine. And there's more, Call Assist, Writing Assist interpreter, health assist and many more. In the camera, portrait mode doesn't work. When you switch between lenses, you'll see this quick green glitch, a weird flash. And if you take a photo at 0.5x, it bugs out. You won't be able to switch to other lenses unless you close and reopen the camera app. But apart from that, the camera takes photos and record videos just fine. It works flawlessly in Instagram and Snapchat. No issues at all. All the connectivity stuff works too. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile data, all fine. DAX works, WhatsApp works, even some banking apps works for me, though I can't confirm every single one. Biometrics? Face unlock doesn't work but the fingerprint sensor works just like before, no issues. Battery backup has also been solid, no fast drain or overheating. And yes, Bixby is now replaced with Gemini, which is honestly a good thing. And now let's talk about customization, it's all here. The One UI 7 look, the redesign icons, the layout. It just makes the S10 look even more beautiful. That display still shines and this UI brings it to life. You will notice similarities to other systems like the split quick panel but who cares. It looks good and it works on your device. That's what matters. Customization options go deep. The color palettes, themed icons, that was already there. Now you've got more. Custom lock screen layouts, shapes, sizes, styles, everything. Add widgets, resize them, adjust every part of your setup. The new widgets, especially for the lock screen and home screen, are beautiful and functional. And yes, good luck works. You can install modules like Key Cafe to change your keyboard style even if it looks flashy and over the top. It's fun to try. Use Theme Park, Wonderland, Lockstar, make your phone 100% yours. And yes, everything works fine. No glitches in my experience. There's also a section in settings called Labs, which gives you bonus stuff like forcing full screen apps in split view. Overall, everything worked fine for me so far, but I haven't tested every single thing yet. I'll keep using it and when I do a full test, I'll post an updated video, also covering the S10e, S10 Plus, S20 series and Note 20. 
so stay tuned for that. And one more thing, the known bugs and issues are listed on the Extreme XT GitHub repository, so definitely check that out before installing anything, just in case there's something I haven't run into. Important. This port only works on the Exynos variants of the Galaxy S10, so unfortunately, no luck if you have the Snapdragon version. And of course, only try this if you know what you are doing. Most of you watching probably already knows the risks and are just experimenting on a secondary device. But if this is your main phone, I'd suggest thinking twice. If you are ready though, links to all the required files are in the description. Follow the steps carefully and you are good to go. Alright, first we need to unlock the bootloader. If you are still on stock Android, first check for any software updates. If there's one available, install it. If not, that's fine. You are probably already on One UI 4.1 Android 12, which is the latest official update for the Galaxy S10. Now if you are already running a custom ROM, just skip ahead. Then flash the repartitioner and cleaner files and then the ROM itself using TWRP. But if you are on stock, let's go. Go into settings, about phone, software information and tap the build number 7 times. That will unlock the developer options. Go back to the main settings and you will see developer options. Open it and look for OEM unlocking. Enable it. Done? Cool. Shut the phone down. Now we need to boot into download mode. Grab your USB cable and a laptop. Plug the USB cable into your laptop, but don't connect it to your phone yet. Take your phone, hold the Bixby key plus volume down and then plug the USB cable. You will see the download screen. If your bootloader is already unlocked, just press volume up once. If not, long press volume up to unlock it. This will wipe everything on your phone and then it will reboot. Once it boots up again, connect to Wi-Fi, go back to settings, repeat the steps, enable developer options and turn OEM unlocking back on. Now shut the device again. We needed to do this because your phone might have been in a pre-normal state and we just avoided it by doing this. So now again, download mode. Volume down plus Bixby plus connect USB cable. You will get that screen again. This time press volume up once. Now switch to your laptop. Open Odin. First click options and uncheck auto reboot. Look for the blue highlight in Odin. That means your phone is connected. After that click AP. Find and select the drop file you downloaded. Hit start. In a few seconds you will see a pass message. That's your green light. Now we need to boot into twerp recovery. Keep holding all buttons on your phone. As soon as the phone screen turns off, release the volume down button. Once you see the Samsung logo, release the power and Bixby keys. But keep holding volume up. You can let go after a few seconds or once you feel a slight vibration. Great! You are in recovery now. If you suddenly see a bunch of cord and the phone reboots, don't panic. It's normal. Let it do its thing. It will come right back into recovery. Now go to wipe, format data and type yes and reboot back to recovery. Now copy the repartitioner file from your laptop to your phone. Once that's done, in twerp go to install, find the repartitioner file and flash it. Once done, your phone will reboot automatically back into recovery. You will need to format data again to fix the encryption issue, same as before. Wipe, format data, type yes and reboot to recovery. Now copy over the cleaner file and the ROM. It might take a few minutes, just wait. Once they are on the phone, flash the cleaner file first. It's quick, the phone will automatically reboot again. When it's back in recovery, go to install, find the ROM file and flash it. This part will take 5 to 10 minutes, so just be patient. When it's done, wipe cache and Dalvik, then reboot to system. And just like that, you are through the hard part. In a few minutes, you will see the One UI 7 home screen. Go through the step, skip what you don't need. After that, check the model. It will show you you are using the Galaxy S25 Ultra. Crazy right? Now it's the easy stuff. Sign in with your Gmail account and start checking out the new features. One thing to note though, when you go to the Play Store, it will probably say device not verified. That's normal on custom ROMs. To fix it, download Play Integrity Fix and Zygisk from the links in the description. You'll flash them using the Kernel SU Next app. Once you have got the files, move them to your phone. Open Kernel SU Next, go to Modules, Install 
and select both files one by one. After that, go to Settings, Apps and play a storage data for Google Play Store and Google Play Services. Then just reboot the phone. Once it's back on, go back to Play Store, check the status and now it will say device is verified. Now why does it matter? Because if your phone isn't Play Protect certified, it might not get Android updates, Google app updates or even run some apps correctly. So yeah, this step is important. That's pretty much it. If you decide to install this and test it out, please share your experience in the comments. What worked, what didn't, any pros and cons. It will help others a lot. More videos are coming soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.